Hey guys, I'm Austin with Absorb Media and today I'm going to show you how I shot a music video and some tips and tricks to make a foolproof plan so your video will turn out no matter what. When it comes to a music video, the first thing you're going to need is some talent. Someone who can either play music, sing music, be music. No, but really, you will need someone who can perform. Preferably pretty well. So in this case, the artist I worked with was Taylor Hernley. Shout out to you, really talented individual. You guys should definitely check him out. I'll link his music in the description. So typically what I do if the artist doesn't provide me with a vision is I will listen to the song over and over and over and kind of see what am I visualizing? What do I see? What's the story here I'm hearing throughout the song or the vibe that I think we need to feel or the vibe that it's giving to me. And then I'll meet up with the artist and discuss that and then we'll collaborate on what the actual video will be. But in this case, we wanted to do something simple, but yet still creative and fun. So we knew we wanted it to be a one day shoot, one location, and wanted to be in and out real quick and just have a quick turnaround in the overall video. And that's what I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you how to do a quick, simple video, one day shoot, one location, multicam setup. So after that, we decided to shoot on this stage here in town that honestly, I didn't even notice was there. It's a small little stage and I don't even know what they do here. I don't even know what it's used for. So I scouted the location since it was local and went to look at it around the time I wanted to shoot, which I wanted to shoot around blue hour, but that wasn't possible with it being this late in the year, getting darker sooner. So I knew it was going to be a night shoot and I wanted to lean into that. But then when I showed up on stage, the stage has this ambient blue lights that I think are on all day or they just come on at night, which I was not a fan of and I was actually really afraid of those. But later when we started filming, I they turned out to be my friend. I really enjoyed them. It looked pretty good, I thought. So after scouting the location, I looked around at it and tried to visualize some angles. I did bring my camera and started kind of holding it up and I didn't bring a tripod. I just kind of browsing my options here for this. And then after I looked at it and kind of got an idea, I knew I wanted to do something a little unique. I wanted the intro to the scene. So instead of just like having him appear on the stage and just perform his song, I wanted to have him approach the stage and add a little bit of some sort of story, some little narrative to this video as simple as it was. So I wanted to have him just walking the streets as if he was alone and didn't, didn't know where he was going. And then he stops at this bench and notices the empty stage and he has his guitar with him and looks at his guitar and then decides like, hey, I'm gonna put a show on for no, for myself, for the empty world. And he walks off to this empty stage and plays a song. And then at the end of it, like walks off the stage. And that was it, super simple. So how do you make a single location performance video interesting? Multicam setup. If you haven't learned multicam editing, you really need to. You don't need multiple cameras to necessarily do this. So at this point, I know the location we're shooting at. I know the time of day we're shooting and I know I'm doing a multicam setup. So after that, I make a shot list and you don't want it to be very large. And you just want to make, I think I had, let me grab this. I had one, two, three, four, five. And here's my shot list. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. This is what I literally brought and marked it off as I went. One is a sweeping gimbal shot. Two, a wide angle. Three, I used a jib with my 50 millimeter. Four, close ups and details. Five, and then freehand shots. And the key is when you're doing this and making this list is make sure you have one to two locked off shots all the way through the song, all the way through. And how you do this is I have a Bluetooth speaker and it's very important to bring a Bluetooth speaker to set aside and play the song your artist is singing. Even, even if they don't understand, no matter how good they are, usually it's for you too in the edit but so they keep their pacing. I've done videos with artists where they've sung the song multiple times on different takes and they just didn't sync up properly. They either held a word too long, held a note too long, too short, sung one verse a little faster than what they usually did in the recording that we use in the video. So during this, there's no audio. I didn't bring any audio recording. I did bring mics just to make sure I could sync it up, but there was no actual audio production on set on the day of the shoot. So I write down my five, my five angles I know I want. I had two cameras there and my friend James Rossman, shout out to you, thanks for your help, brought his pocket 6K. So I knew I had two cameras and I wanted to keep this very simple. So anything I could have two cameras going at once where they didn't cross paths, I made sure to do just to save time. So my sweeping gimbal shot, I did that 
and my freehand shot at the same time. I had James on the gimbal and I freehanded the FX6 and we just tried to stay out of each other's way, but I knew he had the gimbal shots that I was getting. That's what I wanted to prioritize. So I, I stepped out of his way for the most part. But there was two angles going at once. So that's one play through the whole entire song on those angles. So the second shot I had on my list was a wide shot. And this is the most important one. It may not be the most interesting shot, but to have a wide shot locked off of the entire performance, perform, performance, performance, all the way through is very important because in the edit, you will always have a wide shot to fall back on no matter what if things aren't and things aren't lining up in the edit with continuity the artist and that's something you got to work on directing with them too if they're moving around on stage or really getting into it that you want to make sure that when you cut to their angle it's not too jarring in the edit that they're bouncing around into you know they're over here playing and they bounce over here and they're they're playing and it can be it can be off-putting you want it to seem seamless as if everything was shot at once so if you can get multiple cameras at, if you have five cameras, that'd be awesome. But a lot of these shots aren't possible. So the wide locked off is your your insurance there. Always a wide locked off. I also had a close up it was locked off, but it was on a jib rotating back and forth the whole time. So I had that and the wide to always go to that I knew was always in focus. It wasn't bouncing around he wasn't out of the frame the composition wasn't weird but you want a locked off shot to make sure the composition is always good and the artist is always in focus or whatever the subject is you want focus there just to make sure you have a fallback plan in the edit in case all the cameras are like oh crap this is out of focus out of focus out of focus all the way down on your synced up on your synced up multi-cam edit because i've had that happen and i've learned always do a locked off fallback plan then my third angle was just close-ups and details i put my camera on a tripod and as he was singing i just kind of had the the fluid head loose and kind of bounce the camera around and just looking up the guitar, looking at his fingers, getting close-ups of him. And then the freehand, which I did along with the gimbal shots. And I was also able to do the jib shots and the close-ups together. So while my jib was going, I was off on the side on the tripod. So we did the entire song with one, two, three. We did three, three, play, three, so we went through the whole song three times after it was set up. So also in the video, the intro is 100%, well, I shouldn't say 100%, it's 90% sound design. There is some original sound I did keep in there when I wasn't speaking, such as him sitting on the bench and him putting the guitar down. That did work out. The sound was the original sound too. On top of ambient traffic noise, I did over underlay on, on it. But the intro, his footsteps, him walking, him crossing, the cars driving by, all that was done in post. And I went back a few days later to make sure I captured all the audio for the edit. But, uh, well, the first time I went, it ended up snowing and the snow hitting the mic, which wasn't working. I wasn't gonna deal with that. It's like, I'll come back when it's not snowing. Second time, uh, I brought dead batteries in my recorder. Money batteries. But I did do it that day because I stopped being a crybaby and went home, grabbed some fresh batteries, and came back. Uh, get this up here. Oh, it was loud. <laughs> okay, right now we are out back in the same location where we shot the music video. And what we're doing now, this is now our third time because the first time it started snowing and the sound wasn't right. You just heard the snow trickling on the mic. The second time, my batteries died. I forgot to bring extra batteries. So we went back, got batteries. Now we're here. Now we're gonna go try to capture some sound of traffic moving and sound of foot stepping for the music video. Let's go uh, capture some Foley and Nat sound. You like my news reporter Mike here? So I just walk up to people with this and just, how's your day going? So I, I currently made Currently, I made a uh, list that I left in the car. So we gotta go back to the car. And the list was, I already edited this part. And I sit down and hit play through the whole edit and I made notes of sounds I probably should capture that we should hear. Notes are on the other side. Okay, so what I got here is my professional notes here of literally just notes I took as I watched it. We have close footsteps walking away footsteps, 
walking towards footsteps, crossing steps, general fault. I put general foley. I don't know what that is. Cars passing, walking around bench, and then uh, he's got like an XL, which I could do later in the video, but that's it. All right, we're going to go capture some of this. So an issue I'm hearing right now is everything's wet and squishy and I'm hoping it just sounds a little more dramatic in my ears, but these may not work. Okay, it's need hey, why don't you go on the dry part of the sidewalk right there? I think which my shoes are wet. We'll try. And that was a genius idea, Caitlin, because that's the audio I ended up using. Okay, now we're gonna head on down to uh, get some sound of cars driving by the light. I need some sounds of me crossing far away, so I'll have to do that with you. I need the natural sound of him walking up into the bench and sitting down. I don't have a guitar or any kind of wooden instrument with me, so I'm gonna have to do that next. But I'm gonna need you to walk up and sit down on the bench, Caitlin, and I'm just gonna try to capture your audio you doing that, okay? Okay, so hopefully we recorded the sound we needed now and I don't have to try to reenact things back at the house because I really don't wanna come back out here and do this. Back to you, Austin, at the other location of this video of which I don't know where you are because I filmed this part first. Well, thank you, Austin, in the past out in the middle of the street. So to recap, so once you have your talent, pick an easy location you have access to. Bring either two or more cameras. You can do it with one, one is fine, but I think two is always better to have those few angles that are perfectly synced. Bring a Bluetooth speaker to keep the artist in sync with himself. I think that's very important and it makes a difference, trust me. Also, you have that music in the edit when you sync it, that makes it a lot better. Make a shot list and relax. The shot list will keep you level-headed throughout the shoot and not stressing out when you're moving gear, it can get tough. Shot list, and it doesn't have to be technical, you can keep it simple. Literally, I had five shots, which honestly ended up being almost too many. I think three is plenty, but always, 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 always lock off a wide. Lock off a wide and it's always your fallback. Your fallback when nothing's syncing up, you always have that one shot. Not that that's all that it's used for. You can use the wide even when it just fits the song or fits the moment or feels right in the edit, but you will always have that fallback in case there's a continuity issue or things just aren't in focus on all the other cameras, even though you shot the same part and everything just happened to fall apart at the same part in the song. It's happened to me. So that's where I got the idea of like, okay, I'm always doing a locked off shot that I can always fall back on. And I know it's in focus. And I know it's not moving. I know it's just, it's just there. So if possible, do two locked off shots, maybe a wide and a close up. So then you have those two to go back and forth on. And I had a jib for this shot and I also had a gimbal, but honestly, those aren't needed. I could have done three locked off shots. I think it's fun to have one moving shot, whether it's a sway or a loose camera on a tripod or a slider, or even just a freehand shot or something different or unique. But I mean, three shots would be plenty to go through the song only three times. And you could potentially do this, and I've seen people do it before with five to 10 cameras, all the different focal lengths, a long arc around them and stay out of the way. Just you wanna make sure if you're doing two cameras at once, which is very helpful to have that in the edit, that they aren't any killer shots. I know it sounds obvious, but you could write it down and it sounds like it makes sense and you get to shoot and you're like, oh, I'm just filming him talking to his other cameras close up. But well, that's it for this video. I hope that was helpful. I'm gonna link the music video in the description below. Shout out to Taylor Hernley. He's amazing. You should definitely look him up. Check out that link down below. And also thanks to you, James, for helping out with that shoot. And that's it for this one. I will see you guys in the next one.